Okay, welcome back. Um, this is the uh, the the final part, um, the, the 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 fifth and final um, part of the um, series of five podcasts about the um, experience of Germany at war, um, nineteen thirty nine to forty five. Now, this this particular one focuses just on um, the experience of European Jews during World War Two. Um, in a previous revision session, of course, we looked at Jewish policy up to 1939. So I'm just going to pick up the story where we left it off, but the focus is very much on the experience of the Jews during World War Two, And you can see on the mind map there the key sort of strands um, that we are going to focus in on. And, and we'll start off with this one here, more Jews. OK, so um, I'm not going to attempt to go back through... Um, uh, the 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 uh, German foreign policy in the nineteen thirties, other than to just re-emphasise the point um, that Germany, remember, even before the outbreak of World War Two, had expanded her borders. That uh, Germany had um, inc inc incorporated Austria into the borders of Germany, and she had um, in nineteen thirty-eight um, occupied the Sudetenland, and then the middle of the part of uh, Czechoslovakia in um, March of 1939. So uh, Germany, Hitler was pushing Germany's frontiers eastwards um, all of the time. Um, so the key thing is, is that each time that happened, Hitler found more and more Jews inside the borders, of, in, within, within the Third Reich. Okay. Now, up until 1938... Nazi policy towards Jews had been effectively to um, separate them and and um, get, give them the message: you are second-class citizens. And the response of many of German Germany's Jews, and remember, there were only a, a small proportion of the population, about one percent, about five hundred thousand Jews. But um, by nineteen thirty-eight, most of Germany's Jews, or many of Germany's Jews, had left Germany, they had emigrated. That was Hitler's final solution at that particular stage, uh, was to get German, to get Jews to leave Germany. But of course the problem is getting bigger, um, because Austria was occupied, the Sudetenland was occupied, and then on the 1st of September Germany invaded Poland. And these are the stepping stones eastwards, and each time Germany expanded eastwards, more Jews were incorporated. So, for example, three million Jews, I think it was about three and a half million Jews, actually, um, lived in Poland. So, um, the, more and more Jews are living inside the Reich. And, of course, with the beginning of the war, um, and again, just to sort of zoom in on this, remember, of course, that Germany invaded the Netherlands and, the, and Belgium, and they invaded France and Denmark, and they invaded Norway. And each of these occupied countries had Jews living in their countries, Norwegian Jews, D um, Dutch Jews, and so on and so forth. Um, so, effectively, Hitler found more and more Jews under his control. And then, of course, the big invasion eastwards um, in 1941, and the invasion of Russia, there were five million Jews inside Russia. Now, what exactly does this mean? Okay. It means the Jewish problem was getting worse. Emigration is no longer a final solution from Hitler's point of view. Why not? Because when you're at war, you can't. The frontiers close. People can't cross frontiers between nations. Okay, they're, they're, they've been closed down. Um, so, if emigration is no longer a final solution, another solution from Hitler's point of view needed to be found. He does not want Jews within Germany. He's, um, we've already covered that topic the reasons why he doesn't. So, the solution to the problem. Okay. Well, I think the key thing is to understand is that um, Hitler, uh, we of course know that the, the final solution that was eventually decided was to mass murder all the Jews of Europe. Um, but, um, big debate amongst historians, but, um, and it's still ongoing, um, but most historians have now uh, reached the conclusion that that Hitler did not make the decision to murder all the Jews of Europe until probably the beginning of 1942. And we'll come on to that one in a minute. So during this interim period, 1939 to 1941, um, that was a time when the Nazis were not sure what to do. 
What we do know they do, they did, is they started to gather all Jews together. They started to concentrate them. They 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 they, they gathered them into holding points, and the holding points were in occupied Poland. If you looked at the map to the right there, you can see Poland. And basically they um, chose key cities, in particular the capital Warsaw and the city of Lublin um, and the city of Lvov in the south. And what they did is they walled off sections of those cities. They literally walled them off. And Jews, um, initially from Poland, because there were three and a half million Jews, um, but also from the other occupied territories um, that, and from Germany itself, uh, were increasingly transported to Poland and put into these, these walled-off areas. Now, these walled-off areas um, were called ghettos, and um, you have to imagine the Nazis viewed Jews as effectively subhumans, undimensioned animals. So the conditions in the ghettos were absolutely appalling, overcrowding, lack of water, food and, and electricity, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, there are some statistics there. And inevitably, um, Jews started to die of malnutrition and disease. And we're talking about that in the Warsaw Ghetto alone, 5,000 um, each month were dying by 1941. There's a picture of the Warsaw Ghetto, so you can sort of see um, you know, the, 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 how overcrowded they were. Um, literally dead bodies lying on streets. The, the Nazis made no effort to sort of like um, support them in any way. Now then, a, a separate issue, that was Poland. Now, when the Germans invaded Russia, and you, again you can see that on the map, um, there were five million Jews living in Russia. Now, effectively, what, that, that invasion started in the summer of 1941, and, it, and it, it happened in the second half of 1941, as they advanced towards Moscow. And effectively, what happened is, behind the army, SS murder squads called Einsatzgruppen um, followed behind. So as the army occupied a town or a village, and then the army moved on to the next um, objective, the SS would move into the occupied town and village, and horrifically, um, what the SS did is they rounded up and mass murdered all the Jews in those towns and villages, um, perhaps by herding them into a church, burning the church down, or um, driving them out into the countryside, getting them to dig mass graves, and then actually shooting them at the end of the day, um, and filling the mass grave and covering it over. And that, that was happening every day um, throughout the second half of 1941. Now, big debate, did Hitler order that to happen or was it just basically the SS um, making those decisions and just doing it? You have to remember, this is a long way from Berlin. As you, as you, if you imagine the map there, um, as, the, as the, the Germans advance, the further they advance, the, the distance between Berlin, remember you've got Poland between Russia and Germany, is a long, long way. So they're operating a long way from orders um, but there's a lot of evidence that Hitler would have known about it. Um, but what we do know, um, what we do know is that, um, uh, and that there's a picture of, of, of a, one of the few pictures because the, the 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 Germans were very keen to conceal it. None of this happened. All these awful things. None of it happened in Germany, of course. It happened a long way. They didn't really want the German people to know about it. Um, it would have been too damaging to Hitler's popularity at home. Um, although inevitably they did know about it. I mean, you, you can't conceal this from the German people. But what we do know is that as we move into the 1942, there was a meeting in Berlin called the Wannsee Conference. It, it, the, it was named after the villa in Berlin, and it was chaired by an SS man called Heydrich. And it was only an hour and a half meeting. And it was in that meeting that basically they decided we need to now, that the policy is going to be to, be to mass murder. We now have decided what we're going to do. We're going to basically... Um, kill all the Jews of Europe and effectively the men in the meeting were given the brief to decide on the most efficient way of doing it and, the, and uh, w the decision that was ultimately made they went away and experimented and came up with um, the different approaches um, but the, the decision was made to build permanent gassing facilities and that this would happen in Poland Okay, so effectively they decided the place for mass murder would be Poland, simply because Poland was central. 
Um, so, um, uh, again, just looking at the map here, you get a strong sense here of Poland's central position. If you imagine um, the whole of, uh, of German-occupied Europe, that we're just drawing that around there. Okay, that, that's German-occupied or... Um, Remember, Italy and other countries were allied to Germany, but that's con directly controlled by by um, the Nazis. A central place is Poland. Um, it's got a huge concentration of Jews. The ghettos are there, Warsaw, Lodz, etc. Jews have been concentrated in ghettos. Um, most of the, or certainly by um, the start of 1942, um, more than a million of the Russian Jews have been shot um, you've got a lot of Jews in, in the occupied countries of France and so on. So basically, um, and you can see from the black arrows there, transport any Jews left to Poland. And of course, the railway hubs of Europe converged in a town called Oswiecim or Auschwitz. So that was um, different extermination camps were built, but Auschwitz was decided as to be the sort of like centre of the main camp. So again, it's a well-told story. Uh, as we know, it, the deceit was maintained to Jews. They didn't want difficulties transporting them. If they knew they were going to die, it would be harder. So they lied to them. They said, you're being transported for resettlement. But on arrival at the death camps, those who were not fit to work were immediately gassed. Those who were fit to work were literally um, sent to labour camps and were worked to death or when they became too weak they too were sent to the death, uh, gas chambers the most famous um, camp is Auschwitz-Birkenau that's the picture there very very famous um, picture um, but learn the names of the other camps Okay, uh, um, it really is worth it in terms of um, showing your precise knowledge for the exam Sobibor, Treblinka, Chelno and Belzec um, are the key ones for you to learn um, and of course, bearing in mind what we did in the previous podcast, the camps were liberated in 1945 um, by the Russians. Most of them were liberated by the Russians. There were some camps that were um, that the Americans liberated, but the big one in particular, Auschwitz, was um, the Russians, of course, occupied Poland. And so the Russians arrived in Auschwitz and liberated the Jews. Some Jews were still there. Um, but even at the final stages, what we call the death marches, when the Nazis fell into a in retreat, they rounded up Jews who were still fit to work, who were in the death camps, and forced them to, to march back to Germany with them, working them to death on the way. They were that obsessed um, with removing them. Um, about six million Jews. Don't forget to mention the fact that, the, that there were other groups who were, went to the death camps as well. It wasn't just Jews. Um, 500,000 gypsies, for example, homosexuals, all sorts of groups that the Nazis hated were killed in these death camps, but Jews were by far the most significant, and of course we call it the Holocaust. Um, so there is the factual test, um, just to, uh, yeah, again it's just to make sure you've got precise knowledge, you can download that from um, the frog um, area, um, test yourself, learn the facts by heart. The answers are on the next page of the podcast. Just pause it. And there, of course, are the answers. Okay, so that's that. Finish that. Um, hopefully that was helpful to you. Remember, there are some model answers that I walk and talk you through about Germany at war as well. Thank you.